Hey guys, Poplar Mechanic here. Um, so I accidentally nicked my lanyard today at work. I wasn't too happy about it because I just spliced it. Oh, when did I splice it? A few months back. I'd say the beginning of the season. Um, it's not a huge deal. Here it is. Nicked my lanyard there and it was the stupidest thing. It wasn't it wasn't out in front of me, it was actually dangling beside me and I reached in to cut something like this and it must have got hung up on the bar. Like say the front of the camera's the chain and it nicked and it opened it that way. Uh, so I'm splicing myself up a new lanyard, I'll just show you. So basically what I've done so far, I've cut this uh, old splice out which was actually a really nice splice. This is that New England tacky on G, it's not very easy and then look at this splice. That's uh, a nice tight splice. You can see this, it moves, but when I first did it, it would just stay stiff in there. And that's what I like. I like my stuff orientated and neat and compact. And if you have to pull this through a union, you can get it through, you know, as opposed to a knot. But anyway, so I've cut that off. I'm gonna now put my Z on, onto uh, this new piece. And all I've done here is I've got some more tacky on G over here so I just splice this one here so this is the end piece and I like rings on them I got these on Amazon they're called fusion by a company called fusion they're rated rings uh, what is this 25 kilonewton I think the big ones are 32 the big gold ones but anyways I just keep this as a stopper it works well obviously your, your device isn't gonna go through this so if you max out your lanyard for whatever reason this won't pull through um, in addition to that you can hang it up and that's what I like it just clips I just do a regular overhand knot after I clip both these ends up and it just keeps it nice and smooth for me so that's the splice I've done so far I just got to whip it up uh, and now what I'm gonna be doing is cutting this cutting this old splice off here and uh, transferring my uh, snap hook which is also fusion uh, these are really good I just love these snap hooks. I know some guys are switching to the triple safe ones. I'm just way too used to this. And uh, it works good, you know, when you're used to it. I just make sure they're not worn out once in a while. And this one's fairly new. Uh, I probably put this together about the same time. So the beginning of the season, um, it's pretty good. So yeah, I'll cut this open and then I'll be splicing it to the other end of this. I just gotta do some measuring to figure out if I can get about the same length of this because I like this length I like a little bit longer when I'm using rope because when you're doing spurless then you can have like a mini double rope system with you all right I'll see you guys when we're when we're about to splice this up okay guys so I'm at the point where I'm gonna do this uh, final berry on this New England tacky on G line uh, it can be pretty difficult uh, especially just trying to learn yourself and things like that I had a lot of frustrations with this um, but I'll show you a tool today that's going to, you know, great, greatly increase your chances of doing this right every time. I, I can get it every time now. Um, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. So what I've done is I'm ready for the final berry. So this is where the core has to go all the way out through here. And everyone knows it gets super tight in there. And with this New England tacky on, it just, it really binds up. Um, I use, I I have gotten it with just the wire fit. Uh, it's incredibly difficult though. You got to be really, it's got to be a flawless technique or you're not going to get it through. Okay, but I'm going to show you something today that's just awesome for getting this done. I'm going to find a place to clamp you guys here. Okay, that's pretty good, I guess. Okay. So it's called uh, the D-Splicer, or it's Soft Fid by D-Splicer. Now this is a 7 16 line or 11.5 millimeter and S8 medium fid is the one that works for this. And it's a soft fid. So they just show you some things here you can do with it. It's, it's a pretty handy thing. So this is essentially what it is. It's just one end looks like this. The other end's like a Chinese finger trap. 
So basically what I'll do is take the small end. Um, I just use this fid here to open this up a little bit to make it easier to get this in if I can. So the instructions say you want very little of this sticking out. So this is going to here. And now I'm just gonna pull this through. So there it comes. There, and see that's out the other side. Now if only this part was that easy. But with this thing it pretty much is. So what I do is I pull this down right to where it gets to this Bremel splice here where they've spliced this other piece on. So you'll just pull that through, get the Bremel through a little bit, and then you're pretty much good there. So now what I'm gonna do to make this a bit easier quick is just taper this quickly. Um, and then I'm gonna put it in a fid, put it through here, and then I'll show you how that is. Just bear with me for a sec while I taper this. Okay, guys. So what I'm going to do here is stick this through this hole. So she comes out like that. Put your tapered end in there. Make sure it's in there good. a bit crappy I should have used these other types of fids they're really good because they hold here but I just didn't have the right size oh okay so now that we've got this through here what we'll do now is take this tape off go It'll fan out a little bit that's okay I'll give her another taper here and then all we do is pull this till it disappears in there there okay so now it's inside here and the other end is coming out here that's this gray one so what I'm gonna do now what you want to do is pull this through let's pull this through just like this you can see it's starting to come and then once it gets a bit tough I usually grab it by here a little bit. There we go. Snug. And she takes a bit of force to get her through here. Like I said, you can keep working this to loosen it up. And it takes a good bit of force to get her through.
so you just keep pulling her through she can get a bit tough like i said pull some more of that core you seen it just move there eh? when you there she comes so you just want to pull this and that slides this part of the core this way and allows you to pull this through okay so you're just going to keep pulling on that and there, there she comes that'll just pop off the end just like that so that soft fit there now it doesn't always take that much force um it's it's just a really tight right and i did a pretty long berry there that's about a short fit length so boom i got that through now you just keep pulling that through obviously make sure everything's straight there and there's your crossover and that's where these stupid inside ones come out and then with these uh, you basically just cut them tape cut them tapered the same as you would and then pull it inside but anyways yeah this this product is awesome it saves you a lot of headache especially with this New England tacky on stuff because it does this and it'll just mush up on you so anyways I just thought I'd share that with you guys it's uh, again it's by D splicer um, it's the soft fid S8 medium fid for the, you know, the climb lines that we use, 11.5 mil or 7 16 whatever you want to call it. And I got this one on eBay. There's a ton of other stuff. I mean, you can see how useful it is. It's just super handy. So anyways, guys, I'll uh, finish this up. Got my snap hook on there. I'll finish this up and then I'll take it out to the garage and I'll show you how I milk this uh, tight eye down. Okay guys, so we're in the garage now, um, sorry about the low light, um, I got my climbing harness on to sink this in and I'll show you why this just saves your arms big time, it just makes it way easier. Uh, so I've got this end done and now I'm just going to, got all these ends tucked away and now I'm just going to milk this splice back down until it's tight around this ring. So I'm set you guys here, get set up. So for my stop or not on this, I just use an Alpine Butterfly because I find it comes undone much easier than the other knots, a slip knot. Okay, so you're going to lock that side in. This side here is going to clip back to my saddle. I don't need this extra carabiner for this operation. Okay. So basically I've got that anchored to my truck because that's the most solid anchor I have. Um, if you guys are driving a Ford, you might want to anchor to something else. So I've got her anchored in here. Sorry guys, it's hard to tell if you can see this or not. Yeah, that should be golden. Okay. So what you want to, and you're going to need yourself a good pair of gloves. I'm just using welding gloves here. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is when it's clipped to your saddle, you'll just sit back and you can just see it creep right down. Give her a couple jars like that and you can see that that's as far as we got, but that's okay. That's just the beginning. Now we've got to grab a hold of this. And walk back and it's really important to keep tension on here I mean you can pull the slack up uh, you can pull the slack up but make sure when you get to here you're you see I'm already getting some more out of it okay so here we go going to grab some slack milking the rope down Starting right at the knot. OK, 
Okay, so we've made it this far. So this side has to bury inside of there. So that's gonna be a nice tight one, which is what I want because I like my clips orientated. Okay. So what we'll do is grab some more slack. Okay, so we got her a bit closer, but now it's getting real snug in here. Now you can you can use a hammer, that's fine. I used a hammer on that last one. Um, I might do it here, but I'll show you another way. So it's really tight in here. You just fold this with your hands. Okay, so it, it's like as hard as a rock. So you just keep doing that in for another one. Grab some slack. Giving it some snaps. So giving it those hard jars that I've been doing, that works really well. So you can see there's still some to bury. Um, and what I do is I keep giving it a little extra after the fact too. When you, after this rope disappears, the core in there, I give it a bit more. So anyways, we'll loosen it up. Just bend it all ways. And we'll grab some more slack. Pulling down pretty hard on the rope to get that. Okay. So you can see there now, it's pretty much finished. But like I said, I like to give it a few extra. I'd share that with you guys because my struggles with this tachyon and it's excellent line and and that D splicer thing it works for uh, all double braids you can use it for all double braids it's awesome so I will uh, finish burying this and then I just got to do my whippings and then I'll show you my lanyard when I'm done so there we go guys uh, I didn't do the whipping obviously but I just wanted to show you so the snap hook will stand on its own which is nice right because it always keeps it orientated when you want to when you want to clip it in and it will loosen a bit over time not the splice but just wear and tear but it'll take a long time and then I've got this ring on the other side so obviously it's impossible for me to pull this through my Z on here um, I actually quite like this lanyard but it's got a hair trigger on it so you got to be careful but the beauty about this, too, is I'll show you something else. When you're getting into work positioning, you can always take this off. You can put it on, you know, your saddle ring here. And this can be just hooking you away from where you're working. Um, you know, so it's a good lanyard. I like it. And I also, the reason I like my lanyard is a bit longer. My old one was a bit longer. But then I can hook it to my bridge like this and use it for a mini double rope system on top of my uh, other usually SRT line, usually. But yeah, no, it just works smooth as could be. Uh, the other cool thing about the ring too, guys, is so once you're set up normally here, just how you would be, just like this, I usually take these two ends Okay, level these out so I keep these level. Level these out just like that. Clip those right there. And then I just do a simple overhand and clip this back. And then you've got a neat plate way to carry your lanyard, you know, your long lanyard. And this is super light setup too. I love this lanyard. Um, well, I haven't used it yet, but you know what I mean. It's the same as my old one. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, 
Hopefully you learned something. I know I did. I do every time I splice. It's not that easy. Have a good one, guys.